All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring the discussion back up this way. Um, and I think because of the amount of stuff I'm going to attempt to cover tonight, I just am interested in question four. <laughs> Um, it's very selfish of you. I know, I know. I'm very I'm sorry. Struggling. Very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna go home and cry. Um, so, give me some constructive criticism. I mean, we're we're past the halfway point. Uh, what would be something you'd, you'd want to change? Anything? Have some we guts and just it. say say what? We couldn't think of it. All right, so you guys pass. Good job. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah? More, uh, the only thing I would, if I had just talked to you because we weren't done talking yet, maybe like a few more minutes of getting to know each other. Yeah. Time yeah. Time, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah, a little more interaction. Okay. Yeah. Well, we were just commenting on, you know, each one of us learns differently, especially when we're reading. Uh, sometimes uh, as we're reading, you know, we want to stay focused on the message rather than having to go back and forth and fill in the, the blanks on, yeah. on a piece of paper. It, it sometimes is, uh, it takes away from the actual message of yeah. what we're trying to read. And that's just a nitpick of different learning styles. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I hated that in school. Yeah. When I had to fill in the blank, yeah. it was almost like verbatim. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. More time in the week to just spend on it, whether it's here in class or just getting to doing homework. More time on more, the more actual. More time available to actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So like that part one, part two, when you're talking about like things. Yeah. Like, I, I, I I like that grade part grade one, grade. part two, uh, and, and so then maybe you can't. Maybe we would be able then to get, dig into the book. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. That's a that's an interesting yeah. idea. I, I like that part one. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do this for six years, like Justin said. I yeah, so I like you know, break in between that a little bit. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, like no yeah. breaks. But yeah, yeah. Still hang out. You know, this is just feet. like yeah. tough yeah. mutter yeah. of yeah. complete yeah. husband. Yeah. He's like crawling to the end. We can do this. Yeah, class uh, yeah. 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 And, no, I because this class used to be twelve weeks long when I first started. It was twelve weeks long, and you could. We could slow way down, and we could unpack the book and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, on the plus side, we're over halfway done. So, I mean, like, blink, and you, you know, you're you're flying through it. So, okay, yeah. Great job with this stuff. Thanks. I, I know there's a lot. Like for me, there's you get asked, well, what are you learning? Yeah. Or, what are you talking about? And having video or something to have, have it re-explained. Yeah. Is just way more useful, and you can kind of get linked up and on the same page. For sure. With uh, your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, the you know the that is one nice thing about the the video is you you can go back. Oh, what did he say about this, or what did we say about this, or what you know that is one nice thing. The other nice thing is because I don't get a chance to teach this class as much as I want to, um, or you know would would prefer. Um, now there's at least online opportunity for somebody to start to motor through it without waiting for it to come around again. Although nothing, I I don't think anything can really replace being. In a room and going through things, but all right, last chance. Give me some feedback. And not last chance. You can always email me. <laughs> going once, going twice. All right, let's move on. Um, so we have been talking over the last few weeks. We're kind of remembering where we've been, and this is where you can do an open note if you want to, right? Um, but we ta we talked. Two weeks ago about loving our wives. Give me the three adjectives, or not adjectives, but dis descriptions of loving our wives. We're to love our wives most. most. That was one of them, right? Like more than she loves us. We are supposed to go beyond, above and beyond because first. that's what Christ. Okay, so we're supposed to love her first. We don't sit back and wait for her to love us and then respond to that. We love first. So first, most, and unmistakable. Unmistakable. Right? Our wives should not have to guess if we love them first and most and other people. Primarily, if you have kids, they should not have to wonder if you love your wife first and most. Right? So there, there's a, a, something that you can do if you do have kids. Right? Uh, ask them. 
hey, do you think I love your mom more than she loves me? I look at you all weird, but you know, explain that just a little bit um, and, and see what they say. So, loving, and then last week we talked about learning, right? And, and what, what we did was we connected that tree of repentance to the learning. Oh, if I back up the week before, we connected the bitterness pyramid to the idea of loving and how really how we love our wives is an antidote to bitterness. And then last week we talked about learning and we connected the tree of repentance to that. So what do you remember or recall about learning? Feel free, open notes. You can pour through your notes if you want to, if you have them or whatever. Do you remember anything about learning about your wife in particular? <coughs> Anybody remember what verse we camped out on? First Peter three seven, right? Likewise, like who? Like Christ, like Christ, right? And and he, the Peter when he's talking about Christ, what's the context of like Christ? You guys remember? So, like if if, if, if you say what? The the way he loves the church. Okay, it, yes, the, there, there is that aspect found in Scripture overall. And Peter could have picked any, any situation with Christ and said, you love your wife like Christ loved here. But he picked a certain kind of circumstance. Where he said, you love your wife, it would say, what was that? Through suffering. Through suffering. Specifically, things like reviling, right? Uh, abusive language. And, and, and being hurt uh, and, and, and things like that. So that's where Peter says, like that, in that circumstance, you love your wives. Right? Now, there, there were some things that we talked about. Understanding Husband, way. Yeah, in an understanding way. Showing honor. Showing honor. And as a weaker vessel. Weaker vessel, which means what? Treasure. Yes. Find that in China. Fine piece. There you go. Locked in on that fine piece of China. So Absolutely. Very more hindered. So that your prayers will not be hindered. Did that mess with anybody this week? Yes. I hope so. Because it messed with me this week. Right? The thing about being a teacher is you, you can't get around this stuff if you, if you really want to teach well. Um, and so, yeah, it, it messed with me this week. As I was tempted to just like, I was right there. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, and then, mm, my prayers won't be hindered i got to stand in front of a group of guys and talk about that. Yeah, okay. Um, so that, that was last week. We, we tied all that together. And now this week, we're starting to move into the direction of leading. right? So the, the foundation for this leading has been loving and learning. And now we take some, some leadership steps. All right? Uh, but, but before we get there, kind of want to go back into, and you'll see my transitions. I, yeah, I got crazy this week. I, I had a Red Bull before I did this. So just, yeah. I, I, saw, I saw a picture of a kidney cut open of somebody who, like, consumed diet sodas and energy drinks, and it made me want to vomit. So I, I don't, it looked like a bunch of corn shoved into Anyway, all right. Uh, that just as soon as I said Red Bull, and somebody goes, "That's gross." I'm like, "Oh yeah, that picture was pretty gross." Okay, so godly sorrow up here looks like this, right? Uh, and you should have that diagram in your your notebook. Um, so, real quick, we we want the Reader's Digest version on this because we don't want to spend all of our time going back through this. But what's the idea behind contemplation? Yeah. Um. Uh, understanding your impact your, of your actions on your yeah. life. Yeah, right. So taking time to think through how did my sin affect my wife, right? And so you're trying to put yourself in her shoes. What is one way, after you've thought long and hard about how you have sinned against your wife and how that's impacted her, what's another way you can get that information? Ask her. Ask her. Right? And that is... That might seem like a does statement, but that's pretty profound. And I have found most wives have not heard that question. How did my sin make you feel? Right? And believe her on that. Because I've, I've actually sat with, with, with husbands who, when a wife 
went out on a limb and said, I was scared. And the husband comes back with, no, you weren't. Man, that's, that's hard to come back from, just letting you know that. Uh, right? When, no, when you're telling her what her, that, that her feelings are not real, that's hard to come back from. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, okay, so contemplation, right? And of course, horizontal contemplation, right? Jim, you're going to get picked on tonight. So if I sin against Jim and I ask him how my sin impacted him, that has to come after, after what kind of contemplation? What's the opposite of horizontal? Vertical, Vertical right? Like after I spend time with God. Right? So I, I, I got to go this way. That's what we read in Psalm 51.4 last week with David. He went this way, and then he went this way. Okay. All right. So after contemplation then, or I shouldn't say after, what, what was significant about this idea of confession up here? You remember? It wasn't just any kind of a confession. It was a certain kind of confession. Complete. Yes, it was a complete correct. and a correct confession. Right? So it's this full, it's no longer, hey, sorry about that. But it's, man, I didn't realize I did da 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 mm -hmm. And you might even throw in there, was there any more? <laughs> right? But I, I didn't realize all this stuff and how this impacted you and how this hurt you. Will you forgive me for that? Right? And, and I do think, um, we're, we're going to talk about this a little bit more tonight, but there has to be a will you forgive me. Not sorry and not I apologize. Those are statements. <coughs> will you forgive me is a question. And there's some humility behind it. It is harder to say, will you forgive me? Trust me. It's harder to say that than I'm sorry. It's hard to say I'm sorry. It's harder to say, will you forgive me? Okay, and then we've got this change process, which you hopefully have had a chance to at least try with some of your homework, right? There's the, um, oh, what did I label it? Um, not the chapter interaction worksheets, and not the homework, and not the owner's manual, but the other part of your, it, the, the examples on anger. Yeah. What's it called? Plan of change. Plan of change. Yes, plan of change, right? Um, in, in another class, we, uh, we call it um, changed into his likeness or transformed into his likeness, but plan of change. So that's that change up there. And then you got the fruit that shows up, the, the remorse, the reconciliation, and the, the restitution. So I'm not going to take time to go in that. If you weren't here last week, make sure you watch the video. Go back and watch that because we unpacked that, right? But the opposite of this godly sorrow is what Paul calls worldly sorrow. Right? Um, and so notice it's the opposite kind of tree. It's dead, lifeless, there's no roots, there's no leaves, yet there's some fruit there. And this is what we will often try to do when we sin against our wives. Right? We will try and be remorseful. And maybe there's some tears there, but maybe it's a lot of language. And we'll try to do some restitution. We buy flowers on the way home. I buy coffee on the way home, right? Uh, send her to get a pedicure, a manicure, whatever, but we don't change. And then that reconciliation piece is a fake reconciliation, if anything at all. So there's, there's just a reminder, but here's my question for tonight as we kind of move into some things. Why does repentance matter? Now, I recognize I'm a pastor. This is the complete husband. We're talking about God's stuff. And so the, the easy answer could be because that's what God wants. But think, think with me. Why does repentance matter? In order for change to happen. Okay, so change, this, this is the process of change. Yeah, yeah absolutely. There, there's no lasting, and I'll, I'll put it this, I'll say it this way. There's no lasting Christ-like change without repentance. I would be an idiot if I stood up here and said no change can happen without repentance. I've met plenty of people who have changed, right? But they don't change into Christ likeness. Yeah? I once heard of repentance. Um, repentance is defined as a two part word to confess and to change. Yeah. It is change. Yeah, I, and you might even add a third part in there. It's a, a, a confession that leads to a change of thinking, that leads to a change in action. Um, so it's the full, yeah. It's all, just, just confessing is not 
the yeah. content design. That's yeah. First step one. Yeah, and, and that actually creates a habit, uh, like that drives sin deeper. Uh, just read the book of Judges, and you'll see somebody who a uh, whole nation who just does this over and over and over and over, but they don't change. There's no repentance there. Yeah. So, in order to answer this question a little bit more fully, I want you to turn to Luke 17.3. Let's. Un this is a great verse to unpack. Um, and I absolutely want every person in here to leave tonight hearing me well on this. Don't don't misinterpret what I'm saying and don't leave and manipulate with this verse because you could easily do that. So Luke 17, 3 says this. Pay attention to yourselves, exclamation point. Right? I'm not going to try and duplicate how Jesus said it. I don't know how he said it. But I know there's an exclamation point there, which means pay attention to this. This is going to be hard for you to do. What I'm about ready to say will be almost impossible. But you have to do this. Pay attention. Right? So pay attention to yourselves also. That's the, the other part of this. All right. If your brother sins... Let me read the whole thing, and I will, we'll come back and, and stop on certain spots. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Verse 4, And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and turns to you seven times, saying, I repent, you must forgive him. All right. So, why does repentance matter? Because forgiveness is, re like, is built on this. Right? And, and now... Now that I said that, let me reverse and back up, right? So if your brother sins, let's stop there. Two words you need to take note of, right? Uh, the first word, I'm going to throw it up here, is brother. Now, in, when Jesus says this, what is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Okay, a fellow believer, right? So a believer, so as you're trying to apply this verse, you have to ask the question, is my wife a believer? And that might be true for you in here. That might not be true for you in here. Right? But in, in order to apply this accurately, you have to answer that question. So that's the first word. The second word, which is a little bit more tricky, if your brother what? Sins. Sins. What? is a sin. Okay? Disobedience. Okay? Miss the mark. Separation from God. Okay? I, I would say it's sin separates you from God. Yeah. I would say that's a, a definite outcome of that, for sure. But I like these. Disobedience, miss the mark, but it's a diso who's who gets to decide this? Okay, good, good. Yeah, I hate this marker, but that's what we're gonna use. Okay, the marker. I would, yes, I would. Do. I'm putting that in. Okay, um, God decides this. Why is that important? Takes yourself out of the equation. Okay, takes yourself out of the equation. He's the mark. He's the measuring stick. He's the measuring stick. And how do we find that out then? The Bible. <laughs> Easy answer. The Bible. Right? But here's why I make a big point out of this. There is a difference between preference and sin. Now let me drive this home just, just a little bit. At my house... Um, before we eat dinner, we pray. Okay, that's just, that's the way that, that, that we do it. I have many friends who they say, no, the real way to do it is you pray after dinner. Eh, whatever, I don't care. But the way we do it is we pray before dinner. Thank you. Yes. I have to make note of this, by the way. Andrew was one of three guys in here who perfectly 
they, they, they were perfect this week with regard to their wives. Just, let, just letting you know that. Not one sin. Yeah. Jeff was another one. Right? Who else? Uh, yeah. There, there, there you go. Yeah. All three. Okay. Just letting you know. Okay. Anyways. All right. Don't tell them. So, uh, you, you cannot eat at our house until you, you pray. Now, here's my question. If my kids... I'm going to pick on Titus for a second, because if you know Titus, that boy's got the brain of like a 50-year-old and a vocabulary of one, too. Very good. Um, very. Okay, let's say he eats. Did he sin? You mean he eats without praying? Yeah, but yeah we, we haven't prayed. He takes a bite. Did he sin? Against who? Yes. Against God. Okay. You're, you're, you're asking the right question. You're, you're thinking the right thing. He sinned. What was the sin? Disobedience. Not obeying his father. Disobedience to me. Not the eating of the food. Right. That is so important for my kids to understand. So that way they know there's mom and dad's rules. We can bail on those rules once we're not in their house. And we haven't sinned against God. Right? But they have to know to sin against mom and dad... We have to take that on through life because that's a sin against the Bible. So you see, there, there's a difference there. If, if my kids, let's say Maddie, my oldest, she's, she'll be a senior year, next year. If she takes every one of mom and dad's rules and says, it is a sinful thing if I disobey mom and dad's rules, and she goes off to college, that's going to wreck her. She's, there, there are lots of things. That Corey and I, for whatever reason, we've decided this is how we want our house to run. We want you up at this time in the morning. We want you to go to bed at this time in the morning. We want you to do this. We don't want you to do this. Da, 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 da. And if she takes that as that's what God wants me to do, she's going to get wrecked. Right? I do not want my kids leaving home thinking, I am God. And what I say is equal to Scripture. But I do want them leaving, knowing, honor your father and mother, for this is a, this has a blessing with it. You, you see the, the the difference there? No. Any questions on that? Because this this factors in, right? Brothers, or pay attention to yourselves. If your brother, and now let's kind of let's make it for this class. If your wife, who's a believer, sins. All of a sudden, all the stuff that makes us angry, all the stuff that makes us mad, all we have to filter through, is that sin or is that a preference? You see how, how, how that goes? This can't, and God's call for wives is not to make their husbands happy. That's not the call. Right? There's lots of things. That God does ask wives to do, but to make us happy isn't one of them. Because if they did that, they would have to be omniscient. Have to read our minds all the time. They're not. <laughs> right? So, we're working our way through this passage. Be on your guard. Pay attention to yourselves. If your wife sins, now what's the command? Rebuke. What does that mean? Call it out. <laughs> okay. Now I'm gonna say this. Probably explain. Let's put gentle in front. Now that doesn't say it in that passage. I think we could add a few other passages in that would kind of flavor this kind of rebuke, right? But yeah, explain how. Okay. Okay, in a non-condemning way, kind of bringing it to light. A way that a text is sin, not necessarily her. Okay, I love that. In a way that goes after the sin, not her. Now, now do you see why love has to be the foundation and learning has to be the foundation? Because some of your wives are straight shooters. They don't want you to beat around the bush. They don't want you to do any of that kind of stuff. Hey, you look like you got something to say. Just say it. Right? Others, way gentle. 
They, they might even want you to bring this up in a different moment, <laughs> not there in the moment, right? So, but a gentle rebuke. This is the call from Scripture. Now, you're, we're, we're moving towards the chapter entitled, Honey, You Need to Take a Bath. <laughs> I hate that title. <laughs> but the idea there is, is bringing sin to your wife's attention, right? So here, here it is. Be on your guard. Pay attention to yourselves. If your wife sins, rebuke her. And if she, what? Repents. We talked about repentance. It's not up here. If she repents, forgive. Forgive. Her. forgive. Now, I want to unpack forgiveness in just a second. But notice, if she does what? Repent. Not you. Or here, here's, my, here's my question. What if she doesn't? Now what? Rebuke. Okay, all right. Repeat step one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're talking flow chart. Go back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, over there. But, and, and that is true, but the idea behind that is, and I'm going to say this, this is what you can't leave here misunderstanding, but I'm going to say it just like this. Then you, out of love, cannot forgive her. Say, what? And some of you are like, yes, that's what I've been waiting for. I would have paid way more than 40 bucks to take this class to get that. No, no. Now, now let's let's unpack this for, for just a second, okay? Um, well, I'm not going to go there yet. Forgiveness. It's three promises. You can jot these down if you want. Um, I promise I won't bring this up to others. I promise I won't bring this up to you. And I promise I won't bring this up to myself. Or I, I won't dwell on this. Now think about that. That, pro, that. that might not be the way you have handled forgiveness. That you, you might have grown up in a home where you were taught up, I have to forgive. And so you say, yep, I forgive you. But the next opportunity you get to bring that bad boy up, you do. Uh, 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 right? Here's a little thing called sin, and we're going to rub it in your face. Kind of, it, 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 it could be that. Um, but think about the, the power of that, that threefold promise. I won't bring it up to others. I won't bring it up to you, and I won't bring it up to myself. Now, I, I, I do feel like i got to hit the pause button, and I won't bring it up to myself. That doesn't mean it won't pop up in your mind. There are some sins you can't help that just come flooding in. If adultery has been part of your relationship, there will always be a name, probably, that causes things to flood your mind. It, it, if you... If it happened... If, not if it happened, but if you were told at... McDonald's. <laughs> there are certain smells that might trigger memories going into your, your, your head. If you were listening to a certain song, right, uh, uh, that doesn't mean it won't pop back into your head. So that third promise, I promise I won't bring it up to myself, means I promise I won't dwell on it. I promise that when it comes into my mind, I will think about fill in the blank. I will think about the fact that I've forgiven you. I will think about the fact that God has forgiven me way more than I have had to forgive you. right? But I will think about something else. I won't sit there and dwell on it. Um, you know, and, and like a, a good piece of candy, just let it roll around in my mouth. And, oh, this is good. You know, I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> but, um, but that's the threefold promise of forgiveness. Right now, now, now think about Jesus' statement that we read in, in Luke 17, 3. <laughs> Let's kind of back all the way up, right? Pay attention to yourselves. If your wife sins, right, rebuke her. And if she repents, promise not to bring it up. That, promise to her that you won't bring it up to others. Promise that you won't shove it in her face. And promise that you promise her that you won't dwell on it. Do you see how, how powerful that is? 
But do you also see why you wouldn't want to make that threefold promise if she's not repentant? Because what, what have you done if you say, I forgive you, there's those three promises, but she has not. If she just says, oh, sorry about that, and you're like, yeah, I forgive you. What if she does again? Say what? Okay, either you, you've given her a pass, or... Well, she doesn't understand what repentance means. Okay, and, and, and that very well could be it. The, the gracious response is that maybe she doesn't understand mm -hmm. what repentance is. Um, but if, if you say, I forgive you, and she hasn't contemplated, confessed, and changed, mm -hmm. or at least made a plan for that, right? Um, what have you, in effect, done to yourself if she does it again? Because what can't you do? You, you can't bring it up unless you break your own promise. There's where you, you, you don't want to break your own. You don't want to get in the habit of breaking your own promises. Yeah, so let's start talking about this now. Because, like, say what? I thought, like, forgiveness was supposed to be unconditional for Christians. So is there a, if, if he or she sins against you seven times in a day, he turns to you seven times saying, I repent, I'm taking this out of seven different sins? <laughs> well, and he doesn't say different there. I think what, what Jesus is talking about, because so seven is a symbolic number um, in, the, in the New Testament. It, it's a sim, it, it symbolizes completeness and, and, and wholeness. So if they sin against you seven times in a day and come back to you seven times saying, will you forgive me? Uh, or I'm sorry, and say, I repent. Forgive them. Like whole, in, in, in every way, forgive them. Right? I, now, the question is, is if, I told you I was going to pick on you, Jim. If Jim walks in and punches me in the face, and then he comes back and he says, hey, Ben, I'm sorry about that. Will you forgive me? And, and let's say he does a good job of contemplation, confession, and change. I thought about this, and I saw the blood coming from your limb, and that wasn't good, and you know, all this stuff. And, and, and the first one, like, well, yeah, I, I, I do forgive you, Jim. And then he comes back up and he hits me again, <laughs> right? <laughs> And then he comes back five minutes later. He's like, "Ben, I read scripture, and I wasn't supposed to do that." And and he, it, hypothetically, yes, every time I'm supposed to do that, right? Now Jesus does not come at it from the other angle. Let's say Jim comes with me a third time, right? And I might back up. <laughs> if I'm smart, I'm going to back up and say, "Just stay there. I don't know what you're going to do," right? Um, but the the idea there is hypothetically, yes. And, and, and it's not found in Luke 17, it's found in Matthew 18, but the unforgiving servant is really the, the backdrop there where we, we take a look at how much we've been forgiven and then our willingness to forgive should be right there. I feel like, I just feel like as men or just in this world, we get kind of get uh, trained to not forgive. Yeah. If, in that instance, it keeps that, that protection, right? Yeah. Sucks and hurts. Yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, you're like, yeah, I've, I've, I've read this right before. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Now, here's here's what I want to ask. Because on, on that note, this could be twisted to be something mean in a heartbeat. Right? It, where we all of a sudden become the judges of repentance <laughs> and then go, nah, you're not repenting enough. I'm the Bible says, I can't forgive you. And that I don't want any of us in here doing that. So how is this idea that I've thrown out there to, to you, how is this loving? It has to be a loving thing, or this is like from the pit of hell, what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. If this isn't a loving thing, so how is this loving? Yeah. And if you, if somebody sins, sins against you, you don't teach them how to repent or why they should repent. You know, speaking from the pit of hell, like, I mean, you're, you're condemning them. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and maybe even on that same note, if I don't say anything, but I just sweep it under the rug or act like it didn't happen, do I really love them or care for them? Because I, I especially our wives, right? Like we should want them to grow in Christ likeness. And I think that motive can help us with that gentle rebuke. 
Um, is there, there, there are two extremes from my perspective when it comes to, to being sinned against. I either want to sweep it under the rug and act like it didn't happen because I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want any of that kind of stuff. So that's one side. The other side is I never want to let it go. And Jesus calls us to this spot right in the middle where we can't sweep it under the rug, right? But we, we also can't hold on to it forever. We have to forgive. But out of love, we don't want to forgive until that person has repented. And we, we want to help them with that. Is this making sense as we're... So talk, talk with me here. Where's, where are there some holes in this or some things that don't make sense? Yeah. If you're coming to counseling, is that you're, are you referring to the, if they say I repent, is that relational forgiveness or judicial forgiveness? Yeah. Because the, yeah. the idea that you're saying that you should, you're commanded not to forgive them, um, and somebody will try to counter saying, well, the Bible says I have to forgive them. Well, yeah. you have to. I know you've described this before that you're commanded to forgive judicially, meaning you're not holding their sin against them as far as like, you know, getting into heaven, you've been forgiven. But relationally, you're not supposed to trust that Jim's not going to come punch you again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How does Matthew 18 fit into that? Like the last part of Matthew 18 with the unforgiving servant. Um, so how 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 does that? I, I know you just asked me. I, I asked you how. <laughs> but let's let's kind of work together because I, I I don't think those two things negate each other or are in conflict with each other. I think they actually work together. Um, because Jesus does say there, like at, at the very end, do you have it open to Matthew 18? I don't, know. Um, I was just reading yesterday. Though. Yeah, what's the very last verse of Matthew 18? What, what does that say? Because it's a scary passage in light of what I just presented to you guys. <laughs> you guys have your Bibles. I encourage you. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or daughter. Yeah. Okay, so, um, well, the, yeah, the, the idea here, he, he says, you have to forgive, right? Um, so, yeah, then his, in 32, then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. And should you, and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. Now, I don't know if you kind of grasp what's going on there. And just so that we're all on the same page. Whole story in a nutshell. Guy owes his boss the equivalent of $10 million. Like, I've done the math with the denarii and all that stuff. It's about $10 million. Um, a, a huge amount of money. Right? And he asked... It, it, the way it worked back then, you went to jail until you could repay it. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> that seems impossible to me. I think that's kind of the point Jesus was making. What right. translation are you reading? Um, the ESV. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what, my, what, tra my translation has a little more on the jailers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's to be tortured. A absolutely, yeah. I, I was going to say some of them say torture. Yeah. Right. So once again, though, don't know how you make money in the torture process to pay it back. I think the idea there is that's just that's it to your debt. Right. That's what you're going to get. So he asks to be forgiven, and the master says yes. And then he's walking down the road, and he bumps into his friend who owes him the equivalent of $10,000. Still a chunk of money. Right, but not in comparison to what he was just forgiven. And then my my translation, I don't know, some of you who don't have the ESV have say this, he starts to strangle his friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right? Like not let go of the debt. And yeah, and, and then the master who forgave him finds out about it. Brings him in, and then that's when we get this. In verse 32, then his master summoned him, pulled him in. You wicked servant. Right? I forgave you all that debt. Should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? The idea there is and forgiven him all that debt. And in his anger, the master delivered him to the jailers to be tortured. Right? Until he should pay all his debt. 
And then Jesus ends with, So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Yeah. What I was referring to is verse 17, where okay. it says if that person refuses to listen to them, talks about discipline, and then to treat them as a Gentile and a tax collector, uh -huh. if they refuse, basically repent. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Oh, oh, so that's the verse you were talking about, not the... Those is like, yeah, so there's a whole lot that we could hit the pause button yeah. on with any one of these. But for, I, I think for us, and sorry I didn't hone in on the right okay. the passage. Um, it, but yeah, th that would be a good one to talk about too. This one though, this gets into what Andrew was talking about over here. So this right. makes it sound like I have to do it or God is going to you know, squish me. Um, right? And then, but Luke 17, 3 sounds like I, I can't do it out of love until there's some re repentance there. Do you guys remember my story last week about my mom? Yeah. And what did I say to my mom as the bus showed up? Get back in the house. Okay, get back in the house. If you weren't here last week, you get it. I hate telling that story, so you just gotta watch it on the video. But, um, right, and, and so there's, I sinned against her. And anybody disagree with that? I dishonored her in what I said and how I treated her. Right, so I sinned against her. Now, according to Matthew 18, also some verses in Mark, also some verses in Luke, right? She has to forgive me. She has to. But according to Luke 17, 3, out of love, she can't forgive me until I <laughs> repent, right? And so according to my story then, when I came home, what... Didn't I fear? Do you remember that? I was saying the story like when I got off the bus, I wasn't expecting something. Yeah, my dad wasn't home. That was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, she was calm. She wasn't flipping out. She wasn't like you know. There were other moments when I came home and she had, was at the door, like staring at me. That was, those were other stories. Um, but I, when I got off the bus, I wasn't expecting all of my belongings out on the front porch with a sign that said, you're no longer a marshal. I wasn't expecting that. That's judicial stuff. That's punitive. And that's the kind of stuff that in Matthew 18, Jesus says, you can't do that. You have to forgive the punishment of that sin. So, so I'm breaking it out here. Just a little bit of a nuance, right? Um, okay? But when I went in, what was all messed up between me and my mom? Because of my sin. My relationship. When I walked in and I tried that, ha ha, jovial, how was your day? Remember her response? Fine. Fine? Fine? How was yours? <laughs> Something's wrong here, right? Going back to Luke 17, 3. Pay attention to yourselves. I know my mom, she shared this with me. She wouldn't mind me sharing this with you. She struggles with this thing called the fear of man. She just wants every relationship right. Don't rock the boat. Right? Peacekeeper galore. Not a peacemaker, but a peacekeeper. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to answer me. Oh, it was a great day. Oh, da 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 da. I, I, I know that was her heartbeat. But she said, it was good. It was fine. How was yours? So she didn't cut off the relationship, but she treated it different. And then I tried again. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Nothing. All right? And that was the message to me. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. So she didn't kick me out of the house. She didn't disown me. That would be all punitive. But she didn't treat the relationship like it was okay. There's the relationship side of things. But as soon as I said, will you forgive me for? Absolutely. And our relationship returned back to normal. Right? So now that's, that's very minimal compared to a lot of things that could be represented in this room. And I realize that. I'm just, I, I, I use that story to kind of bring out some points. Does that make sense? Difference between where we have to forgive 
and where we're called to actually not forgive. Punishment, relationship. Now, I would say this, and I hadn't planned on going here tonight, um, but I would say this. This models how God forgives us. So if we were to rewind and go, okay, how does God forgive us, right? Does he instantly, if we're believers, does he instantly forgive our sin the moment we sin? No. Good question. You guys ready for my, my crazy illustration on this one? I am heading north on 405 at about 4. Got a picture of 405? Yeah. Okay. And I have waited my turn at the stupid little light, just like every other lemming. <laughs> and that thing turns green, and I happen to look over at the guy who whew, goes by, and there's only one person in his car. <laughs> right? So I shoot up, and I go by, and I give him a wave that only has one finger. Okay? And when I turn back around, there's a gas truck there, and I slam into it, explode. Told you it was extreme. Where do I go? <laughs> yeah, so there's literally, I explode, they're going all over the place simultaneously. But I'm talking eternity here. Where do I go? Heaven or hell? Heaven. Okay, how many people say heaven? Okay? Now I'm going to ask you, why am I, I just sinned? Nobody's going to doubt I sinned. Why am I going to heaven in that moment? Say what? Because you've already been forgiven. Okay. One argument, I've already been forgiven. What else? What's still in your heart? Okay. Are you giving everybody the bird, or are you just going to have a guy in that one moment? <laughs> I just have the machine gun of fingers. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so th there's there's something to think about. What's in my heart? Romans 8.1. Okay, Romans 8.1, which says what? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay. So there's now, there is therefore now no condemnation, no hell, no judgment, no wrath for those who are what? In Christ Jesus. My argument, and I'm going to just stand on a few different scriptures on this one. I'm going to go to heaven because, number one, I have a great high priest who has been tempted exactly as I have been tempted, but he didn't sin. Anybody know where that's found? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. So that's one reason why. Because Christ is my great high priest. He is representing me. And I'm also going to... He's, he's not only my great high priest, he's my advocate. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 says this. I love this verse. Because this is like... This is perfect. John says, My dear children, I write these things to you so that you may not sin. But if any of you do sin... <laughs> like next verse great that's not going to happen so but if any of you do sin you have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous but what does an advocate do think courtroom he fights for you he he yeah he argues your case so in that moment when i explode and i go in a million different directions i have a high priest who has been tempted as i've been tempted but didn't sin and I have an advocate who's running to the Father pleading my case. I am going to heaven. That's what I believe. Right? That's what I think. That's the, the overwhelming message of Scripture. That's the good news of the gospel. I no longer have to earn my way to heaven. If we rewind all the way back to week one, I'm on the team. <laughs> this is just batting practice. And you know what? I swung and I missed horribly. And then I blew up. <laughs> right. I don't get a chance to redo that one. Now, same same scenario, but I don't slam into the back of the truck and I don't explode. Right? What happens? Do I still need to ask for forgiveness from God in that moment? Yeah. Why? Sin against him. Didn't love your neighbor. Okay, I didn't love my neighbor, which is a sin against him. 
But why? He broke the relationship with God. Okay, because I have a broken relationship with God. Just like when my mom said, oh, my day was good. How was yours? Right? My prayer's going to God. God's going, ah, Ben, I'm, I'm good. That's not what we need to be talking about. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know your son is sick and you want him to feel better. That's not what we need to be talking about. I know your job's looking bleak. That's not what we need to be talking about. That, that, that's the idea that, that this brings up. Now, 1 John 1 9 says what? Anybody know? It starts with an if. Yeah, if we confess our sins, condition, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And, you know the last part? Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I'm clean. It's not just a, not just a right relationship, but now I'm clean. Right? But in, in that moment, I don't have to worry about God's wrath. I don't have to worry about hell. I don't have to worry about judgment. That's all taken care of because of what Jesus did in his life, his death, his resurrection. I'm on the team. But I do have to worry about my relationship with the Lord. And God's not going to make it right until I contemplate, confess, and change. Until I repent. And I'm not saying it has to be a complete process, right? But you have to be moving in that direction. And then we're instantly right with God. Does that make sense? Is that good news? Mm -hmm. Great news. I think that's outstanding news. Because if you're a Muslim, that's not true. Right? You are going to blow yourself up, not because you ran into a truck. You're going to blow yourself up to try and make God happy. And hopefully take out people in the process. That's not good news from my perspective. Or you have to make a trek to Mecca. Or you have to do this, or you have to do that. And I could go through every other religion. And it's not like Christianity. So we're, what, what I've done is I've, I've backed this up here a little bit. And I've said what we want to try and do with our forgiveness is model Christ, model God in how we forgive others. Yes, we want to forgive. We, like, we are, I so want to forgive you. And I'm going to forgive you the penalty over here. But over here, I can't forgive you because I love you too much to act like it didn't happen. A question, yes? So... Say you've sinned against a fellow human who's mm -hmm. not a believer, so they're yeah. not a brother. Yeah. So I'm feeling a little condemned now. I think I got a lot of revenge to do. Okay. Got to go work and stuff. Yeah. Um, that's then now between you and God. Yeah. That broke my relationship. Yeah. Because he wants them. Yeah. Now here's the cool part of that, though. That scenario where I've sinned I'm going to use me, where I have sinned against a non-believer. I'm like, crud. Does that mean I have to go to them and ask for forgiveness? You remember my story a few weeks ago where I sinned against that guy at school? I had to go find him and his little, and his friend, I should say, well, his friends, right? Do you remember that story? Yeah, yeah, right? So the cool thing I think about that is now I get a chance to go share the gospel with them by asking for forgiveness. Why in the world would I go up to that guy and say, I shouldn't have said that. Will you forgive me? And whether he asks that question or not, that's in his head. Why are you asking me this? Right. So that's, that's where that can become a, a good thing. Is There's opportunity now for someone to come up afterwards and go, why did you even ask me that? Or people watching it. There's people watching. Why did you ask him that? So that's that's good. Now the other the, the other part of that is, what if a non-Christian, which could be your wife, what if they sin against you? Because that's not in this scenario, right? He, Jesus doesn't say if anybody sins against you. He says if a brother. Right? So now that's a whole different scenario that would take us a lot longer to unpack. Yeah? Just another piece of that um, that I'm kind of struggling with. There's also, if I were to sin against a believer, right, then if, if they're in alignment with this as well, I ask for forgiveness, 
hopefully they find it in their heart to forgive. There's no guarantee that that's ever going to happen. They can say no, never forgive. Yeah. And so is it just the act of asking for forgiveness to someone that actually may not yeah. provide the forgiveness? Yeah. And how do you reconcile that? Yeah. If, whether it's a believer or not, they, yep. they have now the choice to decide whether to provide forgiveness and, and that might not actually ever happen. Yeah. So if I go back to this, right, this right here, this reconciliation, mm -hmm. it's a heart of reconciliation. It, it takes two to reconcile, though. So depending on the sin, and, and, and I'm just going to throw one of the... the the ones out there that seems to do the most amount of damage, which is adultery, right? Reconciliation might or might not happen. Um, but I think for the one who has committed adultery, there should be the, but I want to. It grieves me that I can't. I understand I can't make you. And, you know, depending on certain translations of scripture and what church you're a part of and all that, uh, you know, no. You committed adultery, they have grounds for divorce, right? Which means no reconciliation at first or up front. Um, so it, it, in answer to your question, it's a heart of reconciliation. I want this. Um, as opposed to, yeah, I'm willing to do all this stuff, but if I never have a relationship, I don't care. I, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so does that help? Well, it, it does, but it also raises other questions. You know, you, you see it all the time. Terrible things happen. A, a guy kills, you know, your kid, right? And you see it on the news, and the parents show up in court and say, "I forgive you." Yeah. And I'm going, "Wow." Yeah. He didn't even ask for forgiveness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, the ability to do that, or you know, you, you see these like extreme examples of people either asking or giving forgiveness, which is which is great, but it's it's not something that you know, it's based on the person that you're trying to reconcile with agreeing yeah. that forgiveness is, is provided. Yeah, and just it, one, one little note on that granting forgiveness without the other person asking for it. Um, there, is the, there is a very secular approach to forgiveness. Like, you don't even need the Bible where they say forgive because it's good for you. And, and, and so, and, and now, and there's all kinds of therapies where you pretend this person is still alive because what if the person that you need to forgive dead. is dead, yeah. right? Um, and so there, there, there's therapies where you pretend they're alive and, and so you, you write letters and you talk out loud and the therapist plays the part of the other person and of course they're going to forgive you. You know, that's, that's part of the therapy and, and all that. So this is not that kind of thing. Forgiveness in the Christian sense is being willing to bear the biggest cost. So it, it's the exact opposite. It, forgiveness from a, 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 like this, it makes no sense. This, I am, I'm being asked, I will never talk to anybody else about this. I won't bring this up to you, even when you do things that remind me of this, and I won't dwell on it myself. When, how's that fair? How's that right? Um, shouldn't I be able to just kind of like own you for the rest of my life based on this? Um, and and you know, Jesus would say no, no. Um, so I, I I'm, I'm glad that you, you brought that up because there is a worldly approach to forgiveness that says this is good for you to do it. So do it because it's in your best interest to do it. And this says. It's in the other person's best interest to do it. That's why you do it. But there are some, I think this would also paint the reality, there are some times where, yes, you can forgive, but reconciliation won't happen. Yes, you can repent, but reconciliation won't happen. Um, and in that, you, you just trust, God said to do this, God commanded me to do this, and just hear, well done, good and faithful servant, out of scripture. For you to do what's right, it's not conditional on what the other person does or says or Correct. Or but man, it makes it hard when they don't do. <laughs> it does make it hard. Absolutely.
All right, well, I'll tell you what. We went way longer on this, but I'm so glad that we did. And we're not, we don't have to be done talking about this, but bladders only get so big before you need pampers. Um, so, uh, or you do irreparable damage. So let's take a bathroom break, get some coffee, get some water, and then we'll either come back and continue this or move on just a little bit more.